Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1, Tutorial 25B, Accounting for Non-Strategic Equity Investments under ASPE. This video tutorial is a supplemental resource to the Arnold and Kyle Open Educational Resource Text Volume 1 or any Canadian equivalent textbook that covers equity investments under ASPE. If you want to review accounting for non-strategic equity investments under IFRS, make sure you review Tutorial 25A. There are two basic learning objectives for this tutorial. First is to review how to account for non-strategic equity investments classified as fair value through net income or FVNI, also known as short-term trading under ASPE. The second learning objective will be to review how to account for such non-strategic equity investments classified as amortized cost or AC under ASPE. This tutorial follows the McCoy Inc. example Require number two, which will be to, uh, of course, prepare all the necessary journal entries for all transactions from March 1st, 2020 to December 31st, 2021. This time, scenario 2A is where the investment is classified as short term trading, and for ASPE, that means fair value through net income or FVNI. So, if you're viewing this tutorial first, this is a snapshot of what the information looks like. On March 1st, 2020, McCoy decides to purchase 5,000 shares in a SPOC Limited, and you're presented with a whole bunch of information here regarding dates and stuff uh, that happens during the year. We're going to account for all of these particular transactions over the course of the year. Let's begin. We're going to set up a T account as we did with uh, the previous tutorial. This one will go a little bit quicker. We have an FVNI investments for SPOC, and on March 1st, 2020, McCoy makes the investment, so we're going to debit FVNI investments on SPOC for 12,500, and that was 5,000 shares at 250. There's a transaction fee, so debit transaction fee expense for $500, and credit cash for 13,000. In the T account, we insert a debit of 12,500. Then on October 31st, SPOC pays a dividend to McCoy, so we will debit cash and credit dividend income for $1,300, which is based on 5,000 shares times a 26 cent dividend is $1,300. Then on December 31st, 2020, we need to remeasure the shares to fair value. We're going to debit FVNI investments for SPOC and credit unrealized gains or losses for FVI investments for $1,750. And remember that it was calculated as 5,000 shares times the difference between $2.85 minus the $2.50 cost. Let's presume that you have viewed the previous tutorial first to see where these numbers are coming from. We're debiting $1,750 to the T account, and that gives us an ending balance of $14,250 at the end of the year, which is the equivalent to 5,000 shares times $2.85. Then on July 31st, 2021, there's a sale, but as we did with FV and I investments under IFRS, we need to first revalue the shares that are sold prior to disposal. If you recall, there was a $375 change in value that was based on 2,500 shares sold times the difference between the $2.70 fair value minus the $2 and 85 cent carrying value. And so that results in a negative amount of $375. So we're going to debit the unrealized loss account and we're going to then credit the FVNI investment SPOC account for 375. So that's what the credit here is in the T account. Once we've remeasured the shares that are going to be disposed of, we can record the actual sale. The company will receive $6,750, which is 2,500 shares times $2.70. That's 6750 So debit cash, credit FVNI investments for SPOC for 6750 So we'll put that as a credit into the T account, and that ends the journal entry for that transaction. And then we make our way to the end of the fiscal year, where we have another remeasurement. So we will have the remaining 2,500 shares that are left. And we're going to multiply that by the new $3.50 fair value minus the $2.85 carrying value from the previous period. That's 65 cents, if you recall from the previous video, times 2,500 is 1,625. 
So this is another increase in value. So we're going to debit the FVNI investments for SPOC, put that in the T account, and then we will uh, credit in the unrealized gain on FVNI investments. And this will give us a balance in the T account at the end of the year of 8,750, which is equal to 2,500 shares left times $3.50 fair value. Now you may have noticed that if you had viewed the previous tutorial, this looks pretty familiar. And in fact, it should be very familiar and really a review since FVNI investments are treated identically. They're exactly the same under ASPE and IFRS. Now we'll move on to requirements 2B, where the investment is classified as amortized cost. We begin on March 1st with the purchase of the investment, and we're going to debit this time. We just uh, give it a different account name, Amortized Cost or AC Investments SPOC, and my T account reflects that revised name. So I'm going to debit AC Investments SPOC for 12,500, which is the purchase price. That's the 5,000 shares times $2.50. And then what we do here under Amortized Cost is also take the transaction fee and add it to the investment account as well. The difference here from FVNI is that under FVNI, the transaction fees, the broker trees are expensed separately. So in this case, they are added to the account similar to the OCI approach under IFRS. Debit investments for 12,500, debit AC investments block for 500 for the fee and credit cash for 13,000. Then on October 31st, there's the dividend. Again, it pays 26 cents per share dividend times 5,000 shares. So that's where 1,300 comes from. Debit cash, credit dividend income. That's the same as it was under all the other methods actually. Now here's where it starts to get a little different. Between now and the year end of December 31st, normally under all the other methods so far, we would have recorded a fair value remeasurement, but under amortized cost investments, we don't do that. So no remeasurement at year end. So the balance in the account at the end of the year is just $13,000, which is the original cost. And then moving along chronologically, of course, we would have our sale in July, but also under amortized cost, there is no remeasurement of the shares prior to sale. So it's a little bit of an easier method. So we jump straight to the sale on July 31st. We're going to debit cash 6,750, which of course is 2,500 shares sold at a price of $2.70. That's 6,750. Then we need to credit the investment account for the original cost of the shares that came out. That would be $13,000 multiplied by 2,500 shares sold over the original 5,000 shares purchased. And if we took this 13,000 and divided by 5,000 shares, that works out to be an average cost of $2.60. And you'll see that again in a minute here. 2,500 shares times 260 is $6,500. So that's what is removed from the account. So we'll put that as a credit to the T account. Then if we take the difference between 6750 and 6500, right, that's a gain of $250. Well, we can actually confirm the value of that gain. 2500 shares sold times the difference between the sale price, 270, and the average cost of 260, which I calculated here. And again, the average cost, $13,000 divided by 5,000 shares is $2.60, which worked out to be used in this calculation as well. 270 minus 260, of course, is 10 cents. 10 cents times 2,500 is $250. That's the gain. So debit cash, 6750. Credit AC Investment SPOC for $6,500. And credit the gain on sale for $250. Then we go to the end of the year, and as we saw at the previous year, and there was also no remeasurement at December 31st, 2020. No remeasurement under AC cost investments in 2021. So the ending balance in our T account is simply the 13,000 that we had at the end of last year minus the 6,500 removed for the sale results in a balance of $6,500. And that's all there is to it. So now we will close with some key points to remember. First, equity investments classified as ASPE, amortized cost, are not remeasured to fair value, unlike FVNI under both ASPE and IFRS, and unlike FEOCI under IFRS. In addition, equity investments classified as ASPE 
FV and I are remeasured at year end and prior to a sale. They were measured to their fair value and they're treated exactly the same as FV and I under ASPE. Any brokerage or transaction fees for investments classified as FV and I are expensed separately and that was exactly the same treatment as under IFRS. Any brokerage fees or transaction fees for equity investments classified as AC or amortized costs are added to the investment cost and then basically included in the calculation of an average cost. That concludes tutorial 25B. I hope you found it useful. If you have not yet reviewed tutorial 25A, accounting for investments under IFRS Standard 9, then you are advised to do so.